If you or a loved one are struggling with type 2 diabetes, you should visit the link in the description below. This clinically proven drug-free program lowers blood sugar to a normal level and can completely reverse type 2 diabetes within just a few weeks. Here's today's video. The question, how do I lower my blood glucose level? How do you treat type 2 diabetes? Answer by Puneet Chandna, controlling BP though lifestyle. What does my lifestyle have to do with my blood pressure? The things you do and the foods you eat have a big effect on your blood pressure and your overall health. Following the right lifestyle can lower your blood pressure or keep you from getting high blood pressure in the first place. Reduce your need for blood pressure medicines. Make medicines for high blood pressure work better. If you do take them, lower the chances that you'll have a heart attack or stroke, or develop kidney disease. Which lifestyle choices will help lower my blood pressure? Here's what you can do. Lose weight. If you are overweight, choose a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and low-fat dairy products, and low in meats, sweets, and refined grains. Eat less salt, sodium. Do something active for at least 30 minutes a day on most days of the week. Limit the amount of alcohol you drink. If you have high blood pressure, it's also very important to quit smoking. If you smoke, quitting smoking might not bring your blood pressure down, but it will lower the chances that you'll have a heart attack or stroke, and it will help you feel better and live longer. Start low and go slow. The changes listed above might sound like a lot, but don't worry. You don't have to change everything at all at once. The key to improving your lifestyle is to start low and go slow. Choose one small, specific thing to change and try doing it for a while. If it works for you, keep doing it until it becomes a habit. If it doesn't, don't give up. Choose something else to change and see how that goes. Let's say, for example, that you would like to improve your diet. If you're the type of person who eats cheeseburgers and french fries all the time, you can't switch to eating just salads from one day to the next. When people try to make changes like that, they often fail. Then they feel frustrated and tend to give up. So instead of trying to change everything about your diet in one day, change one or two small things about your diet and give yourself time to get used to those changes. For instance, keep the cheeseburger but give up the french fries. Or eat the same things but cut your portions in half. As you find things that you are able to change and stick with, keep adding new changes. In time, you will see that you can actually change a lot. You just have to get used to the changes slowly. Lose weight when people think about losing weight, they sometimes make it more complicated than it really is. To lose weight, you have to either eat less or move more. If you do both of those things, it's even better. But there is no single weight loss diet or activity that's better than any other. When it comes to weight loss, the most effective plan is the one that you'll stick with. Improve your diet There is no single diet that is right for everyone. But in general, a healthy diet can include lots of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, some beans, peas, lentils, chickpeas, and similar foods, some nuts, such as walnuts, almonds, and peanuts, fat-free or low-fat milk and milk products, some fish. To have a healthy diet, it's also important to limit or avoid sugar, sweets, meats, and refined grains. Refined grains are found in white bread, white rice, most forms of pasta, and most packaged snack foods. Reduce salt Many people think that eating a low-sodium diet means avoiding the salt shaker and not adding salt when cooking. The truth is, not adding salt at the table or when you cook will only help a little. Almost all of the sodium you eat is already in the food you buy at the grocery store or at restaurants. Figure 1 The most important thing you can do to cut down on sodium is to eat less processed food. That means that you should avoid most foods that are sold in cans, boxes, jars, and bags. You should also eat in restaurants less often. To reduce the amount of sodium you get, buy fresh or fresh frozen fruits, vegetables, and meats. Fresh frozen foods have had nothing added to them before freezing, then you can make meals at home, from scratch, with these ingredients. As with the other changes, don't try to cut out salt all at once. Instead, choose one or two foods that have a lot of sodium and try to replace them with low sodium choices. When you get used to those low sodium options, find another food or two to change. Then keep going, until all the foods you eat are sodium free or low in sodium. You become more active if you want to be more active. You don't have to go to the gym or get all sweaty. It is possible to increase your activity level while doing everyday things you enjoy. Walking, gardening, and dancing are just a few of the things that you might try. As with all the odd, her changes, the key is not to do too much too fast. If you don't do any activity now, 
Start by walking for just a few minutes every other day. Do that for a few weeks. If you stick with it, try doing it for longer. But if you find that you don't like walking, try a different activity. Drink less alcohol if you are a woman, do not have more than one standard drink of alcohol a day. If you are a man, do not have more than two. A standard drink is, a Knorr bottle that has 12 ounces of beer, a glass that has 5 ounces of wine, a shot that has 1.5 ounces of whiskey. Where should I start? If you want to improve your lifestyle, start by making the changes that you think would be easiest for you. If you used to exercise and just got out of the habit, maybe it would be easy for you to start exercising again. Or if you actually like cooking meals from scratch, maybe the first thing you should focus on is eating home-cooked meals that are low in sodium. Whatever you tackle first, choose specific, realistic goals, and give yourself a deadline. For example, do not decide that you are going to exercise more. Instead, decide that you are going to walk for 10 minutes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and that you are going to do this for the next two weeks. When lifestyle changes are too general, people have a hard time following through. Now go. You can do it. Answer by Belita Kim. Regular exercise can help you lose weight and increase insulin sensitivity. Increased insulin sensitivity means your cells are better able to use the available sugar in your bloodstream. Exercise also helps your muscles use blood sugar for energy and muscle contraction. Control your carb intake. Your body breaks carbs down into sugars, mostly glucose, and then insulin moves the sugars into cells. When you eat too many carbs or have problems with insulin function, this process fails and blood glucose levels rise. However, there are several things you can do about this. The American Diabetes Association ADA, recommends controlling carb intake by counting carbs or using a food exchange system. Increase your fiber intake. Fiber slows carb digestion and sugar absorption. For these reasons, it promotes a more gradual rise in blood sugar levels. Furthermore, the type of fiber you eat may play a role. There are two kinds of fiber, insoluble and soluble. While both are important, soluble fiber specifically has been shown to lower blood sugar levels. Answer by Lifespan India Type 2 diabetes is when the pancreatic cells produce less than the required amount of insulin or the insulin produced is not completely utilized by the body tissues. There is insulin resistance or impaired glucose tolerance by the body tissues. At Lifespan, we help patients in managing their type 2 diabetes. There is regular consultation with diabetologist and dietitian together with monitoring of the blood glucose values regularly. The diabetologist prescribes the oral medication or insulin based on the blood glucose values. A personalized diabetes-friendly diet is prescribed to the patients considering their food likings and preferences. Recipes especially designed for diabetics are also provided to the patients. We at Lifespan provide a special screening test for diabetics, which is the risk test. This is a screening test based on insulin resistance and impaired glucose tolerance which shows 30 vital cardiometabolic health parameters. It determines the optimum functioning of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. It also assesses the cardiovascular health by determining ventricular function and hemodynamic analysis. Blood pressure and lipid markers are also assessed as indicators of chronic hypertension. Treatment of type 2 diabetes at lifespan focuses on an overall well-being of its patients. Under one roof, a diabetic gets investigations HB, A1C, FBS, RBS, consultation with expert diabetologist and treatment. We have our own pharmacy where medicine orders can be placed.